My name is James Chris Kelly, the Fighting Cowboy. And you're watching my manager and the host of the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Forget about it. Hi, this is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and you're listening in to the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Now, Brad's told me he's won many accolades for this interview show. I haven't seen any. And he's told me he's world-renowned for his interview uh, style, his charming personality. I doubt that. And he told me he can get anybody to anybody on his show because everybody wants to do it. I don't. So, Brad, at this point, this is what you want me to say, your stupid line. Right? But I'm not going to say it. I keep telling you, I'm not going to say it. So, until then, listen in to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. And Brad, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. I'm John Ruiz, two-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching my man, Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. This is Craig Houck, CEO of the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame. You're watching Bad Brad's interview show, forget about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. You know him for his catchphrase, forget about it. You know him as the author of the world-renowned book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. You know his snazz, you know his jazz, you know him for all that pizzazz. When it comes to boxing commentary, he does the most. Without further ado, here's your host of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show. Bad Brad Berkwit. How do all these people get in my room? Forget it. Hey folks, we're back with another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show. Forget about it. Before we begin, I bring a special guest on. I want to give a few shout outs to some people because you've really been helping me out. Word of mouth. I mean, we're booked all the way through the end of September. Kenny Angotti, thank you from Angotti Landscaping. Jack the Kid Callahan, your man Gabriel called me today. I gotta find a date to get him on. He's an MMA fighter, Jack's training. Uh, as well, Marty and Eric Jabowski, I'll let you guys argue who's better looking and who's funnier. You guys are coming on. Alfonso Ratliff, who will be on tomorrow. He calls me every three days and we talk for about four hours on the phone. It seems like four hours. Great guy, he'll be on tomorrow. Uh, I wanna remind everybody as well, Make sure you hit that button when you go to my Inside Report web TV channel and subscribe. We're getting more and more uh, subscribers every day and I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, as I said, we have a special guest on. Everybody said, you gotta get this guy on, you gotta get this guy on. Well, we got this gentleman on. He is a 72 gold medal winner in the Munich, uh, when we uh, had the Olympics in Munich, Germany. He's the only boxer that year to come out with a gold medal. And he has a sweet nickname. In fact, I gotta probably slide back because if we get too close, I'm gonna get diabetes, okay? <laughs> which I already have, but I don't wanna make it worse. My blood sugar's been really good since I've been working out. But I wanna welcome to the show, the man himself, Sugar Ray Seals. Thank you, sir. Thank I, you. I'm not trying to say you're old, but you're old, brother, and I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah. I watched you as a teenager back in the day on NBC when Freddie Pacheco was on there. Yeah. And Marv Albert, yes. I remember when you fought, we're going to talk about him, but I remember when you fought guys like, I believe Cyclone Hart you fought. Eugene. Okay, you, uh, James, God rest his soul, James Shuler, sure. Black yes, Gold. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. You yeah. know, those yeah. guys. And it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor for anybody that sits in that chair that comes on, but it's an extra special pleasure. And I want to thank yeah. our mutual buddy, Craig Howard, Craig for Howell. bringing you, because yeah. uh, when he said, I'm coming, you want me to bring sugar? I said, I would, I would tell him, I said, I'll bring the tea, you bring the sugar. Okay? <laughs> there you go. So we, yeah. we're plenty sweet. Yes. But before we get into the yes. questions that I have for you, I want Debbie to zoom in on that sweet gold medal. Yeah. 19. Let's point to that. We're going to take more pictures afterwards, folks, but that's an accomplishment there. History books. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Before we begin, I'm going to read a quote I got from a former world champion, a buddy of mine, my paisan. This is what he said about you. Ray was a shining star coming out of the 72 Olympics. He fought any and all contenders. Yes. 
If it wasn't for a physical ailment, he might have been the middleweight champion for years. Yes. And I'm going to tell you who said that about you. Ray Boom Boom Mancini. My best friend. Yep, Ray Mancini said that. Ray Mancini came to Tacoma, Washington in 1984 when I retired. Okay. I retired and, and Sammy Davis was there and Ray Boom Boom Mancini showed up. There you I go. mean, he, he didn't, nobody called him anything, he just showed up. Well, he's class. Come on. Class. And then Marcus Murray, they all showed up to pay homage to sit to, to a champ. That's what they called me. Right. Greatness. Because, hey, I've done a lot and I'm still doing it now. When I texted him, I said, I know you're familiar with Sugar Ray Seals. He said, familiar? He wrote a kid thing, but I know his career, exclamation point. Yeah. And I said, Ray, shoot me a quote, and he liked that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Let's, we're going to go back, we're going to go forward, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have some fun as well. I'm with you. For the viewers, where did you grow up? I was raised in the Virgin Islands, born in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. But in, at 12 years old, I moved to Tacoma, Washington, and I was raised in Tacoma, Washington. Let me give you a shout about Tacoma. We, Sugar Ray Seals, the Seals family started boxing in Tacoma, Washington with a coach by the name of Joe Cloud, who's in the Philippines doing his greatness. I, I, he's a Facebook friend of mine. Oh, yeah. yeah I know come you. on. Come out, of, come out of Tacoma, boys, that we sent three fights. Well, let's, let's start over again. I was the best fighter. I was a Golden Glove champ. I went, won everything in the amateurs. And then we went to Munich. Joe Cloud sent three fighters to two Olympics, and we came back with two gold medals. And then after that, everything changed. I became that person that that gold medal made me, someone to be recognized all the time. You know, 1972 at the Olympics, because I saved America, the only American gold medal winner, I held the American flag. I qualified for the Olympics in February, but in, in on September I was in Munich, Germany. I won the only gold medal for the United States of America, and I held that flag. The president said, "Thank you. We don't need you in the military now because you've done your work. You saved us. Right? You're the only one to win a gold medal. You saved. So every time I meet a soldier, so they recognize me from somewhere. I don't know." But they salute me, they shake my hand and they say thank you. And I'm glad for that. That's it's just hard. Of, well, it's just coming from the Virgin Islands, not knowing what's going to happen to you in your life. And this is what happened. By winning that Olympic gold medal, I'm a different person today. Let me ask you, did David Lee Armstrong, isn't he from, is he from Washington? Yeah, Washington State. Washington State as we, well, right? Matter of fact, we went to the Olympics together. Okay. Back in those days, you could up the age a little. You can fill that that, that uh, birth certificate up and up his age. <laughs> so we upped his age. Right. So he went to Munich and then he turned. He didn't win. He won a few fights, but he didn't get a medal. But then he turned around and went to Montreal with Leo Randolph. He won a few fights again, but he made it to two. That's right, because he went to seventy-two and seventy-six. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. 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 David Lee Armstrong. Shoot, got, he's having problems today. Yeah, I know. I know. I interviewed him like a decade ago. Yeah. He was good then. Yes, sir. But then a, a buddy of mine on Facebook said, since then he's he's really declined. What happened is that he went to uh, Lou Duba's gym. I think he was with Lou Duba somebody. Main event. They, they they used him as a sparring partner, so he burned himself out. So he had nothing. Wow. So he come back pale, and now he's, he's ill, and him. he had dementia. He don't know nothing. That's it. Don't Brace know Bob. nobody. He's just there. He's like, Bob, there hey, it. come on. But but we did our thing. Right. It's where God gives us. Do the best you can, and if you can, and that's it. That's all I'm asking. You do the best you can. He did the best he can. He right. went to two gold medals, two Olympians, man. Sure. Come on. He went to two. Right. So he done his job. Now he's just there. So now, here's what has to happen. People have to come to his rescue because we have to rescue him, take him, pull him out of that dark because that's where he's at right now. He's in the dark. Yeah. Help. It's, it's sad. It breaks it my heart. As a young child growing up, mm -hmm. what made you want to box? My dad was a fighter in the military. He fought three years. He was a 31 in one record. He lost that last one. Why? Because we tell everybody now, Sex weakens <laughs> the legs. Come on. Remember that. Sex weakens the legs, <laughs> folks. Yes. So so we told it, but now he's telling us this is what happens. So I have three other brothers, and we all learned together from the Virgin Islands. We had a chance to go to Tacoma, Washington. That's where we moved to the state of Washington because my brother got hit in the eye with a fruit called a connect. 
It was a hard fruit with a seed and a shell on it. You got hit in the eye. My mother's brother told her that there were special doctors in Tacoma, Washington. So we took a chance. We took that chance and what happened? It became my opportunity to become the person that I am today. Okay. To win to start a boxing team in Tacoma, Washington and to be the first in everything. Okay. And then that's where I am today. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. We're gonna segue yeah. right into that now. Yes, sir. We talked a little bit off camera, but mm -hmm. for the viewers hearing this, mm -hmm. when you heard, when you got, because if I remember you guys, and I think they still do, you were like on little platforms, right? Or something like that, yeah. like boxes, I don't know what they call them, but yeah. I don't want to say podium, but they'd have, you know, each one like the gold medal and that. Stamps. So, right, the stamps, right. When you heard your name and they put the gold medal around you, uh, what was it like? Listen, man, it was, the, it was the most important thing that happened to me in my life, the best thing that happened. I showed myself, well, it was shown to me that I can rise to the top in whatever sport I'm in. Two words I teach my guys today, and I've learned that from all the time in my game. Focus on what you're doing and listen how to get it done. Two words. So that's what I have to do in Munich. Okay. Get myself. My mom was there. Here, here what happened. My mom bought a plane ticket six months before I qualified because she knew I was going. Hmm. Six months before I qualified, man. Come on. Hey, love. Come on. And what they're telling me, it's in you. Put it together, go get it. And that's what I did. Now we're talking about the terrorist killing in Munich, Germany. I had problems because I had to get words to my mom and my dad to don't come to the village because this is what's happening. After telling them that, then I had to pull myself together and get myself prepared because I just heard that the Olympics is going to continue. So I had to pull myself together to get ready to go back out there and do what I went to Munich to do with my parents. Get that gold medal. I didn't know I was going to be the only one, but I knew I was going to be one because it was already planned. We did that. So, hey. My mom was there, my dad was there, and if your parents are there, then you're gonna do everything that is right because they gotta make sure you do that. So that's what happened. My mom is in heaven, but she is happy. She's looking down now because she knows what I did is what we planned together. Absolutely. Come out the Virgin Islands, man. Right. Come from way down there, don't know nobody, but we have to go through these steps to get to where we are to the day. And when that matter, and that's where we are, man. I love my game. Let me tell you something. We'll probably catch you later, but I boxed 19 years. I had 430 fights, amateur and pro. Right. I lost 19. I had over 200 knockouts, and with 10 ounce gloves, I almost hurt somebody. But that's because I wanted to be the person that I am. I want to be the champ. I love that name, champ. So I just want to be a champ. Right. So here I am. In doing research, I don't know if you've ever been asked this question before, but it's something that came across my mind as I was researching you for this interview. Mm -hmm. You won gold in 72. Ali won gold in 60. Yep. You know the history when Ali came home into a country that he represented the United States of America as a black man mm -hmm. who came back to Louisville, Kentucky mm -hmm. and couldn't mm -hmm. steal with a gold medal representing the United States of America. And this is the truth. We're not in the no. middle, and you know this, mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But couldn't get served in restaurants because of his skin color. What I want to ask you, Sugar, is this. We came, the 60s was uh, a very uh, heated time with the Civil Rights Movement, 64, with the Civil Rights Act. We go into the 70s, it's during the Vietnam War, all that stuff is going on. 12 years between Ali winning it and you winning it. When you came back, did you face any, anything? Any type of discrimination still, even with a gold medal and, and representing the United States of America? You know, I came back, coming back from Munich, landing in Tacoma, in Seattle. It's SeaTac, Seattle, Tacoma International. When I was coming back, the announcer on the airplane said, we are now landing at the Sugar Ray Seals International. Wow. Okay, after that, things changed. I went back from Seattle now to Tacoma because Tacoma's mad because Seattle is doing everything first. When I'm not from there, but it's Washington. And the land there first. So now going back to Tacoma, they was upset because I wasn't there. 
So things didn't go the way we was expecting. I didn't get all the, the glory and everything fall in my lap. And no, no, no. I had to go back to work. Prepare myself to move to the next level. And again, I'm from the Virgin Islands, so nobody could understand the lingo. My language, my verbal talk, I'm talking, talk, and they can understand that because I have an accent. Right. So I had to change that to become the person I am. I had to change that and knowing that I can't stop and wait for help. I got to keep on moving. I had my mom with me, my brothers, my sisters, my dad was at the Virgin Island, I had my uncles and everybody. So I had the people that I need to do what I had to do with me already. Tacoma loved me now because I won and they understand. I started boxing and we won. Joe Cloud was my coach. Something went wrong that they kicked him out of, out of Tacoma, so he's in, in the Philippines right. doing the same thing that he was doing to Tacoma White. We build a boxing team and he's doing that there. So the match is for what Ollie faced in 60 still with discrimination, did the country move forward? Did you see, it's just in your opinion, did it move forward no. when you came back? No, it was still. It was, it was still, still the same. Yeah, it was still. We have to keep on work. You know, yeah, Ali had to go back in, but he, he looked down and he threw his, his medal away. He had to go back in there right. to get that medal so the world would come back together. Right. Or else we'd still be dealing with that five, three years that he, he was laid off from boxing. Right. See, I was up in there. But at my age, 19 and 20, I didn't pay attention to that. I focus on my mother because now my mother is taking care of eight children, four boys and four girls in Tacoma, Washington. Not only that, but she's, she's working. She's a nurse. She's doing all of that. And this is what we have to do in order to become that person. I made a, a history in Tacoma because the first Olympic gold medalist. I made history in Tacoma, Washington. September 13th, Sugar Ray Seals Day in Tacoma, Washington. I got one. April 14th in the Virgin Islands, it's a government holiday. Sugar Ray <laughs> Seals Day, I got one. Fantastic. But it wouldn't happen if I didn't learn what I learned from my dad. Okay. Boxing. And then if I didn't have a trainer like Joe Cloud, I don't know if I'd be there. But everything worked together because we wanted it that way. We was in Washington to become the person that we can show who we are and what we have. Shit, I was only 12. Wow. I was only 12, man. Make it the first, and then I had to change that. People didn't like the accent because I'm an accent. And they didn't like that, so I had to put my hand up. I met Joe Cloud, I said, box. And after that, we became the best. First Olympic gold medal, the first uh, national champ, the first Golden Cup champ, the first trophy, the first belt, the first medal, yes. But it happened because we was focused on becoming the best that we could be in Tacoma, Washington. The world. Okay. The world. Looking at your record, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. you turned pro in 73. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest thing that you kind of surprised you going from the amateurs to the pros? Was it the headgear or what, and what, what was it for you? Yeah. Was the headgear? That was good. Head gear. Because now we don't have headgear. Right. But here's the deal going into another man's hometown and becoming the champ there. Here, when I won the gold medal, I won the gold medal for the United States of America. So it makes no difference wherever I go, I'm at home. So now I have to prove to them people that, yeah, you got to, I'm, I'm part of you. And I'm gonna meet your boy because I'm part of you and I won the gold medal for you and you're with me. And that's how we went. Okay. You fought some big names. I'm gonna throw some names out at you. One of them we already talked about, but I want the viewers to hear it. Yes. Okay. You fought him three times. Yes. Marvelous Marvin Hagen. Marvelous Marvin Hagen. The first time in 1973, I went to Boston. I went to Boston. When they had the promotion that I had, they didn't know nothing about this. We was doing friend state. Friend for you, and then friend help you, and then do this for you, and whatever happened to me, happened to me. So we went to Boston. I was in Boston in the TV studio, and it was freezing. I was freezing. When he came out that dressing room, he was sweating. I mean, like, he was, the water was just pouring off of him just like that. So I knew I was in trouble. It went 10 rounds. I knew I was in trouble. But I lost in the TV studio. He was in trouble too. But because at his place, hey, the trouble was taken care of. He was, hey, done what he posted. 
We got rigged, they got food and everything else. And then the second fight we had in Seattle, Washington, three months later, and that's how I thought, I thought, I thought a champ or a guy that's gonna be trapped. Yeah. And then three months later, I'm fighting again. But here's what I did. We went 10 rounds, we had a drop. I knew I won that fight because when he left, he had his hat down. Nobody knew he was going to the airport because that's my hat. I ran him out of Seattle watching. <laughs> right. But it was a 10 round draw. And then the third fight, I'm telling my man, I said, listen, now, they, I, had, I was a USBA and ABF middleweight championship. And he needed either one of them in order to get a shot at Alan Minter for the world title. So I went to Boston for the third fight. It lasted one round. I wasn't ready. They threatened me, so I would say, yeah, I'd say it on TV, they threatened me. Because they said either take the money or we're gonna take your title. So what are you gonna do? Right. I wasn't ready. Let me ask you this, from the couple times that you fought him, did you see, because we know he went on to be, you know, he's, he's a legend now. Mm -hmm. he's, you know, from 80 to 87, he was the middleweight champion beating everybody. Great, one of the, Fort Hearns and one probably mm -hmm. the greatest three rounds of boxing I've ever seen. Yes, sir. Just a war. Yes. But did, in your three fights, did you see him getting better or was he the same? Uh, he was the same. He was the same? He was the same. It just it just so happened that they trained for, see I never go and look at the film and train for this guy. I just go and fight the guy. Okay. You see, so now since we went 10 rounds and was a drug, they trained for me. They got ready. See, so when I went up and I was just there as a fighter, just going to go and, and do what's supposed to be happening and let it go. But no, they was ready. They come to kill me, to tear me apart. And that's what he did. He caught me with a heck of a shot, man, and down I went. And I couldn't, couldn't pull my conscience. I was down. Another big name, Aya Kalula. <laughs> Recollections Denmark of him. Denmark Copenhagen. I beat him. But they took the title, they took the, the win from me because I was in his town. Okay. Yeah. Alan Minter. That's exactly. the next one. You, what, you, you what? Look at him. I know. <laughs> That's the next name, Alan Minter. I know he's coming. I know he's coming. Yeah, Alan Minter. You see, one. here's the deal. Again, we just took the fight. We went to London, England, and we just took the fight because they wanted the fight. So we went. They didn't care. We knew what we was going to do because we were winners. But it didn't happen like that. I got knocked, I got knocked down. And uh, back in the days, it's, we're going back to the olden days because there's no neutral corner. Right. I drop you and I'm standing over and when you get up, I'm gonna knock you down again. So, so that's what happened. I lost because I didn't, the people that I had with me, we wasn't focused on studying what's going on in London, England. We just packed our bags, jumped on the airplane and went over there and, and because we knew we were winners. Well, that's why Ray said what he did about you. You fought anyone and everyone. There was yes. no, I'll duck this guy, I'll duck that guy, which you see a lot in boxing today. Sure, I don't know? need to duck nobody. You know, exactly. See, I, I'm going to take, because I'm going, I'm taking the shot to the title. So I'm going to fight everybody that's in that row, in that line. And that's what I did. And even though I got in there, excuse me, Cypher Hunt, it was the wrong guy, but I was there. My, and, come on, Ayub Kalula is the wrong guy, but I was there. I admit that was the wrong guy, but I went to these guys' hometown. Right. Dwight Davidson. Oh, come on, man. Tell me, you're talking about, you're talking about tough guys mm -hmm. that are there in their town. They know what they have to do to keep the winning going. Beat the crap out and find it. See, we go into that ring and we're supposed to leave everything in the ring. Not come out with something because there ain't no come out. It's in and staying and that's, I fought everybody, man. And the final match about his delayed black gold, James Shore, <coughs> died in a motorcycle crash. Yes. Tragically. Right after he beat me, in, in, over in, in Atlantic City or wherever, he beat me. It went the distance. But I was blind. I couldn't right. see him. What fight did that happen in? 1980 when I fought, I fought uh, Jamie Thomas in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He, he, it, uh, it was he it just dumped me now. So you got detached right yeah, now? I knocked him on the top of the detached right in my left eye. Okay. And then after that, things changed. And now, now, today, I've went through eight surgeries. Four on my left and four on my right. Uh, the last, I had nine months or so, I had the last four, the fourth one on my right eye, and I'm seeing now without glasses. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I, I was watching you on one of the crazy videos, and I'm like, for a guy whose eyesight isn't that dog going great, he's sure looking at Facebook and, and, and posting. Yes. And, posting too. and I know you're older, dude, because 
yeah. you guys love to post in all caps, but you know that means you're yelling about yeah. it. But I, yeah. I was looking at, I said, you, your eyesight is where you can, you can post on those dog Yes, things. sir. So but, that's, hey, that's great. John Abrams, Dr. Abrams, hell of a guy, and heck of a, he is the Pacers doctor, eye doctor. Okay. And he took care of me. And here's how what he did for me. He took me to a Pacers game to check my eyesight. Pass that ball! Shoot that ball! Give me that ball! And he said, oh, so I see you the next seven months. He's done a great job. And that's how they check. Okay. Because I've seen that. Right. My wife is mad too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she said, see, you wait till those chores that you need to do right now. Now that you can see, you need to do it. You retired in 84, you said? Yes. Okay. Catch the viewers up. From 84 now, I know you work with fighters and all okay. that, but what have you been up to? I retired in 84. I had my uh, seven, six, seven surgery in my mind. In 1985, I became a high school teacher at Lincoln High School in Tacoma, Washington. I, I was a high school teacher for 17 years, and I worked with the autistic students, autism. I'm able to train, teach those guys the mental, the stuff that we need. Just the basics, cook, clean, clean, wash, pick up, and and, and everything, the basics. I helped a lot of parents, man, for 17 years as a high school teacher working with the, the children, autistic students. Okay. Right from there in Tacoma, Washington, I moved to, to Indianapolis, Indiana. Now, in Indiana, I'm a coach, a boxing coach. I've been in Indiana for, for 12 years. I've been coaching boxing 11 years, and with two teams, we have won 10 Golden Glove team championships. What's the name of your IBG, Indiana Boxing and Grappling. And it's where? Uh, off of east east side on uh, east uh, east side Washington. east side Washington and Oakland. Okay. Okay. Yeah, great. It's 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 a village. See, I moved to this place. I moved there six years ago. When I moved there with two Mexicans, there was third place two years ago. I took two Mexicans and, and we worked hard. Not to say the name like that, but they're my friends. Right, no, Habla un poquito español. That means I speak Spanish. Jabel, the day she got your jab right hand left hook, that's all they need. But I took two Mexicans two years in a row and, and they became the, Olymp the Golden Glove champion, the best fighter, and the best fight of the night. Two fighters, Mexicans, they love me. Okay. So I went to IBG, found them third place two years in a row. I took my boys and we changed it with first place six years in a row. Correct. Love the game. With all of your knowledge and what you went through, the ups and the downs in, in boxing, if you could part a little bit of wisdom on a young woman or a young man or woman, because mm -hmm. we have women, professional fighters too, going into the pro ranks, what would you tell them? Two words. Focus and listen. That's like your mom used to slap you upside the head and say, boy, you better pay attention. Two words. You see that? Focus and listen. Focus, that's hard. Focus on what you're doing and listen how to get it done because we know about that. And I'm experienced, so I'm going to help you. But you got to pay attention. You got one mouth and two ears. Listen, shut your mouth. Okay. That's all. Focus. And, and then become okay. learners, man. And, and like I said, I'm experienced and I'm giving you what I know. And what I know is all about winning. 430 fights, 19 years, 19 losses. 400 and something fights, man. 400 and something wins. Come on. So yeah. I know something. You, and hear what you're supposed to. You're supposed to know how to snatch that from that coach and put it into you, and you become that person. That's right. So that's what I share. Okay. If I can't give, I ain't gonna. You know. If you could change mm -hmm. one thing in professional boxing, just one thing off the top of your head, mm -hmm. what would you like to see changed? I want to see. Well, well, get rid of the kickboxing. It's stealing the real boxing. Because it's now you say kickboxing, you talk about MMA. MMA. Yeah. Okay. UFC, MMA. You have to get rid of that because it's taken away from our sport, boxing. Because our boxing is number one. But you know what? I, I I'm not a fan of MMA. Mm -hmm. I do cover it because I have viewers that like it, and on my website, Ringside Report, mm -hmm. I have an audience, so I have to. I we cover it. But I'm going to say something in their defense. Sure. The reason why they're hurting boxing a lot is mm -hmm. because. And I've been around boxing 44 years. I can believe it. And there's, there's no other sport for me. I don't care about football, basketball, baseball. I, I appreciate them and I respect the athletes. Mm -hmm. Boxing is it for me. But the reason why UFC, in my opinion, is hurting boxing is because we're getting away from the best. I've always said, they always ask me when I do get interviewed, they say, 
What, what is it to get boxing back to what it was? So the biggest thing is the best have to fight the best. Yes. Period. End of story. Yes. MMA puts their best against their best. So they're taking people away from boxing because mm -hmm. they don't, they don't want to see Floyd Mayweather fight someone that shouldn't even be in the ring just because they're trying to give somebody a paycheck and he's the trying to get fight. 48. Oh, Conor McGregor, forget about no, it. No, not him. Yeah. But the, no, the, his last fight was the McGregor. Dad, that was the UFC. No, yeah. no, the last fight when he fought that UFC, that, that little kid. Oh, you talking about Andre Berto? Well, no, whatever. Uh, the little kid that, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the little kid that, that Mayweather fought. I'm trying to What's his name? Nine million is kickboxer. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, they, yeah. That was like that was like an exhibition thing. Yeah. Right. But no, but they let him get the commission. Let him get the fifty and oh yeah. fighting Conor McGregor, yeah. who had no business. I don't care what they said. That fight was fixed. That's I true. said, I've said on, on TV already. I stand by it was fixed. They made a ton of money mm -hmm. to let him go to fifty and oh. And you know, and in fairness to Floyd, I was, in my opinion, he's the best fighter of his generation. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to get the 50 and 0 that way. That's not, to me, that's not, you know, okay. guys like you had more than 50 fights. Yeah. Guys like Greg had over 100 fights. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get the 50 and 0 fighting Conor McGregor. I know it's a, don't get me wrong. Nope. I know a saying where he says, if it makes dollars, it makes sense. I understand, you're putting your life on line. Mm -hmm. But realistically, a true warrior isn't gonna fight Conor McGregor to get the 50 and 0. And mm -hmm. I think, back to the MMA thing is, they're pitting their top guys against their top guys. So you're not getting Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns in their prime. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, well, Marvin was a little bit past his prime. Yeah, Marvin Hagler when he fought Sugar Ray. But Sugar Ray played around. He waited Marvin five years. Or Marvin yeah. when he fought Tommy Hearns. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. But, okay. On that note, we're going to mm -hmm. take a short commercial break. Hey, folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring. And the New York thing, forget about it, Bad Brad Berkwood. And I got an exciting opportunity for people that would like to sponsor the Bad Brad Berkwood show or advertise with me. If you're interested, call the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B-B-E-R-K-W-I-T-T. B Berkwood, my last name of course, at AOL. Dot com. And one more time, that phone number is 703-517-2155. Sponsors and advertisers, we're looking for you. All right? Forget hey, about. folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And what do Gene Fulmer, Aaron Pryor, James Whip Tillis, Davey Pearl, Joey Bishop, Al Martino, Jerry Bale, and Roy Jones Jr. all have in common? Well, they are some of the many interviews in my boxing book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of this book, go to authorhouse.com. Again, that's authorhouse.com. And if you would like it personally autographed, all you have to do is pay postage and handling to St. John, Indiana, back to your location, and I will sign it the way you would like it, or I can put a personal description that I think you would like in it. All right? Forget about it. Hey folks, this is Bad Brad Berkwood, and I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis. Now, a short little bio on him. On October 3rd, 1981, he faced Mike Weaver for Mike's WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World and went 15 rounds, dropped a close decision to him. Fast forward to May 3rd, 1986, when James Quick Tillis took on a then young Mike Tyson, who was 19-0 with 19 knockouts. Quick took him the distance, and he was the first man to do that, and he laid the blueprint that Buster Douglas would take four years later and wind up beating Iron Mike Tyson. Now, with that said, if you would like to book James Quick Tillis for personal autograph signings, TV, movie events, personal appearances, you can reach out to me at the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Again, that's 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B-B-E-R-K-W-I-T-T, -T, Berkwit at AOL.com. Again, I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis, also known as the Fighting Cowboy. Forget about it. 
All right, we're now back, and I did check my blood sugar, sitting next to Sugar Ray Seals, and it, it's been okay. It's been okay because I had I ate I ate chicken breast today for lunch because I knew he was coming. I didn't want my blood sugar to spike. If anybody, I know you remember, but Jake Lombardi had a great line. I'm stealing this from him. He said he fought Sugar Ray Robinson so many times that he got diabetes. It was a hilarious line. All right, we're gonna have some fun now. I'm gonna throw some random questions out to you. First thing off the top of your head, there's no right or wrong answer. Tell me what your answer is. Favorite fighter of all time? Muhammad Ali. Okay. I'll tell you why, though. That's fine. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you why. Because in 1977, him and I fought in the same tournament in Chicago, Illinois. He did a five-round exhibition with Scott LaDue. I went 10 rounds. As a matter of fact, I went 15 rounds with Doug Dennings. Okay. 15 rounds. We became friends. After that, you know, and my problem uh, in Tacoma, Washington, I had a benefit, Sammy Davis Jr. came in 1984, Muhammad Ali showed up to pay homage to Sugar Ray Seals because we knew each other for good. Muhammad Ali said to me before, before he died, he said, service to others is the rent we pay for our room in heaven. I'm a high school teacher. I understand that. If I don't give, I don't get. So it's all about giving, and then that's what Muhammad Ali told me. So we became the best friend. I met him four or five different times together. I mean, we heard one time he was throwing punches at me, and I was catching him, and he stopped, and he looked. He said, man, I thought you were blind. I said, well, I said, well man, that's his instinct. I said, you check out, ooh, you do the same thing. That's plain instinct. Right. So that's my man. I'm sorry he's home, but he's, he's blessed. He's rushed. He's blessed. Favorite fight of all time? Favorite fight? Uh, let me see. I think I think when I fought Marvis Marvin Hagler, uh, and I went ten rounds. Okay. The second fight. Now of yours, but yeah, outside of you. Outside of me. Yeah, outside oh, of me. oh, 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 Emil Griffin. Against him. Against Benny Kid Perret. Oh, yeah, Come on. Yeah. But here's the deal. Focus and listen. Gil Clancy said, "Look here, boy, you're losing. Here's what I want you to do: go out there and start punching." Don't stop until he either fall or the referee stops you. And what happened? He fell. Yeah. He died in that fight. He did what he was supposed to do because he paid attention. We opened up. We shut our mouth. Put our mouth in the book. That's what we do. Pay attention. Favorite boxing commentator? Harry Cosell. Love him. Even though he wasn't the most knowledgeable, he made the event so excited. I try to tell young kids instead, they don't get it. They say, he didn't, it doesn't matter. He, when he said, down goes phrase, yes. down goes phrase. It's a sound bite for the ages. Come on, man. You know? It's yeah. Howard Cosell. Yeah, yeah. Best I friends. Howard. I met him, and my mom met Howard, and she fell in love with, my, with Howard Cosell. Okay. You, I'm going to throw some sports out at you. If you mm -hmm. don't follow him, that's okay. But if you okay. do, you do. Favorite football team? Uh, I like uh, the, uh, the champions. The champions, who the champions are now? The Patriots. 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 I loved them for a long time. Okay. But before then, it was it was the. Uh, uh, come on, I, I got it now. I'm gonna tell you in a minute. But okay. because I loved those Franco Harris and those guys. Oh, Steelers. 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 Yeah. You see, Debbie whispered off camera. She said the Patriots, but she's a Saints fan, so I'm surprised <laughs> she didn't say Saints. <laughs> but if you would have repeated it, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> favorite yeah. favorite basketball team. Oh, what? Come on, man. Lakers. Okay. Favorite baseball team? Uh -huh. The Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Oh, the Seattle, the Seattle Mariners. Okay. I love them because I'm I'm a, I'm a Seattle I'm a uh, Washingtonian, so I love them. They, even the even the New York Jets and Giants and all those guys are tough fighters, are tough baseball players, basketball baseball players, and I love them too. But I got to stay home. Okay. Seattle Mariners. Favorite genre types of movies? What is your favorite? Movies? Mm -hmm. Well, I love. Uh, Action. Action, okay. I'm all about action, man. I mean, give me some action. I, I, I watch it. I watch it all night long if you move. And, and I'm, a, I'm a cowboy fan. Okay. My, I uh, manage Quirtillis. Yeah. Quirtillis is a, a fight cowboy. guy. He loves cowboys. Come on. I'm a cowboy fan, man. And I love them guys, too, because they're team. Okay. Favorite movie? Ah, see, now you're going somewhere now. Their favorite movie. Let me see now. The last time I saw that. Favorite movie? Uh... Mm -mm. Oprah Winfrey. The what, the color purple? Color purple. Okay, which Cortillas was in that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. Great and movie. that puts you where you're going. That puts you in your place. 
Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Should have won an Oscar. It was Rob. Come here. Man. Absolutely. Favorite musical band? I love the uh, uh, great, I mean, uh, come on, I'm going to get you, you're right in my mouth. I love you too. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, don't even say it. No, don't even say They played uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh, God. Maurice White. Come on, man. Yeah. Great band. Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh, they, they, legends. Come on. Legends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Favorite male singer? Marvin Gaye. Love him. Female singer? Uh, uh, Rita Franklin. Okay. Do you have a favorite song? Uh, no. Okay. I just love them all. See, here's the deal. As a boxer, an athlete, you got to have the ear for the music. You see, the violinist, I can put that up in my ear. Uh, uh, piano, I can put that in my ear. Trumpet, I can put that in my ear. Singing, yeah. It's all about. So I'm, I'm all about that. Okay. I just love all the music, though, because you have to... You can't just put one and say this is it. No, you got to love it all because they're all singing to you and for you. Okay. This is the man question. Uh -huh. Favorite type of car? You like sports cars? You like muscle cars? If you if you could walk outside and walk into a car right now. I'm a Lincoln try. kind of man. You like Lincoln? What era of the Lincolns? In 1972, I had a 74 Lincoln Mark IV. You had the one and that Cannon had, yeah. William Conrad, and yeah. had a detective show. Hey, with listen. The, back, the, yeah. the big wheel in the back. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was black, it was black, it was blue, but turned black at night. And then I had a 76 Lincoln Mark okay. car. Tom Cook, so Lincoln's to me. Okay. Your favorite noise or sound you like to hear? A guy getting punched. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Least favorite noise or sound? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, horn. Truck horn. Truck horn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a loud one. Yeah. Favorite food? Well, I, I like uh, I like Virgin Island fish or shrimp. Okay. What type of fish do you have there? Uh, uh, salmon and... Uh, oh, damn, love salmon. Yeah, and, and uh, crawfish and all of okay. that. Oh, Lord. That she's salivating behind the camera. You know yeah. she's from Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, we, so we, we haven't heard the accent no, yet. No, You'll hear it before you leave. We, we put that, that, that uh, fish thing out there, and, and after hours, we go and pull that sucker back in, and they were crab and all I'm that. I'm going to talk to Craig off camera here. I know I'm yeah. not supposed to do that, but it's my show. Yeah. You know what? When he when you guys leave, she's going to say, we're booking, a, we're booking a vacation to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to have to lay out the bread. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> if, you could hit, if you hit the lottery, uh -huh. Tomorrow, yeah. What would be the first thing you do? Uh, give my ten percent back to God. Okay. And then I would help everybody else that I that needs help. I I know I, I'm full of money. I just can't spend. I gotta give it. If I don't give, I don't get. That's what Jesus said to me. He said, boy, if you don't give me something, I ain't gonna give you nothing. He said, don't even worry about coming with something because I got you covered. He says, you pay attention and give to all those that needs. So get it to give it. Okay. I'm a share. Favorite vacation destination? Uh, Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands, okay. Salt water. Okay. If you could meet one person from any time in history, any 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 person, that would be a boxer, mm -hmm. but it could be, mm -hmm. who would you like to meet and what would your first question be for them? President Obama. Okay. And what would you ask him? Uh, you like boxing? Okay. All right. With everything we've discussed, boxing, talking mm -hmm. about your wonderful parents, talking about that beautiful gold medal, your knowledge in boxing, uh, your, your philosophy on life, if you had to sum yourself up, if, I'm going to say Ray Seals on mm -hmm. this one, if you had to sum yourself up as a human being, just as a human being, nothing to do with boxing, mm -hmm. what would you say? I'm a great person because I love people. I love giving. And, and because I, I, I gave for 17 years at the high school to those children, I loved that. I love what my mama did. My mama helped people. She helped you take care of your children, so I'm going to give her. Okay. What was, what was her name? Valencita Encarnacion Seals. Okay. Finally, mm -hmm. what is the saying you live your life by if you have one? The saying, do the best you can. Live for, live for tomorrow. Okay. 
What I would like you to do now mm -hmm. is look at David at the camera and I want you to shoot out a message to your family, to your friends, to your boxing fans. Whatever you want, it's your platform. Look at that camera and whatever you want to say. Here, 1972 was a great year. We're in 2019. It's better now than it was way back then. But here, I want to tell you, focus and listen. Pay attention. It's going to be good. Do the best you can. Give 100%. And that's all we can do. Much love. Sir, absolute pleasure. Thank you. You got a lot of knowledge. God bless you. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, folks. You said it. I got him. Again, thanks to Craig Howe for bringing him. Mm -hmm. Greatly appreciate it. That's another show in the can. Forget about it. Yeah. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. come. Bad Brad out. Yes.